You know, it's gotta be fun to be an engineer. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have many buildings and huge systems that made life so much easier than before. But being an engineer also carries a lot of responsibility. After all, the tiniest miscalculation could lead to a terrible disaster that can cause destruction and death. In today's video, we'll be looking at the worst mistakes made by engineers. You'll be shocked when you see how a couple of engineers made mistakes of historic proportions that cost lives, money, and a lot of time as well. Our first entry is... Vasa. Before the Titanic, there was Vasa. This huge ship was built between 1626 and 1628, and it was known as the largest sailing vessel of its time. Sadly though, the glory of Vasa didn't last long. In fact, it lasted even less time than the Titanic. After being in the sea for only one mile, the ship capsized and sank because its gun ports were far too low. Many people were able to hold onto the debris to stay afloat, but still they lost about 30 people along with the ship. The ship spent more than 300 years on the seabed, but the warship was finally recovered, and today you can still witness its splendor if you visit the Vasa Museum in Stockholm, Sweden. Our next entry is the Cleveland Gas Explosion. Back in 1944, big businesses used to think that having their gas tanks above ground was a good idea. That was until the Cleveland Gas Explosion when natural gas leaked and mixed with sewer gas and air before spreading and causing a massive explosion. As a result, 130 people died and it changed the way gases and tanks are stored. Our next entry is the Citigroup Center. Last minute changes can either enhance your project or ruin it for good. And when it comes to engineering, you better hope that your last minute changes are worth it. Otherwise, you could compromise someone's safety. In 1978, the team behind the construction of the Citigroup Center made some changes to the structural braces of the tower. This made the building vulnerable to high winds. Luckily, the builders were able to rush and install welded panels before being hit by a hurricane. The group in charge of the construction tried to do the repairs without getting too much attention. But what they couldn't escape was the millions of dollars that they had to pay to make up for not addressing this problem during the initial stages of construction. Our next entry is the Kansas City Hyatt Walkways. Hotels are supposed to make us feel great and relaxed, even if we're there for just a short event and to steal the towels. But on July 17th of 1981, a nice little gathering turned into a disaster. What happened was one of the walkways in the Kansas City Hyatt collapsed on top of another walkway, and together the two walkways fell on a lot of people who were there for a tea dance. A total of 114 people lost their lives and 200 more got injured. After 14 hours of work, the rescue team finished their tasks. In the end, a thorough investigation concluded that this disaster was the result of misconduct and negligence. They had used beams that could barely stand 30% above the capacity they were supposed to hold. This explains why the engineers involved in this project lost their licenses after the incident. And honestly, I feel they should have lost more. Our next entry is the Charles de Gaulle Airport Collapse. Charles de Gaulle is one of the most important airports in Europe. That is why they continuously look for ways to improve this space. In 2004, they decided to open Terminal 2E, but things didn't go as expected as a large piece of the roof collapsed not long after it opened. Sadly, four people died due to this incident, but experts had said this terminal was in good condition and had zero flaws. After a thorough investigation, authorities did realize that the roof was in fact way too weak to hold metal pillars, and that's why the roof collapsed. After a bit, they finally were able to reconstruct the space, but it cost them 120 million. Our next entry is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. No one loves wobbly bridges, and while the current Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington is considered an engineering masterpiece, the original bridge was a complete failure. In November of 1940, after four months of being inaugurated, this suspension bridge collapsed and it immediately became a case study for scientists and engineers around the world. Before its collapse, the bridge was wobbly. Construction workers nicknamed it the Galloping Gertie because of the vertical movement of its deck. When the strong winds of November hit, the original bridge came down. Thankfully though, no human lives were lost. Though, sadly, a dog named Tubby, who had been left by its owner in a stalled car, fell with the bridge. An engineer did try to save him, but the scared dog bit him. Poor dog, he must have been terrified. Our next entry is a far more familiar one, the Titanic. 300 years after the Vasa incident, the Titanic was built. And this one was supposed to be the largest ship ever built. By 1912, no other ship had ever been as large as this one. It was 240 meters long and weighed more than 46,000 tons. 
And like many of you know, the life of this ship came to an end when it hit an iceberg while traveling through the Atlantic Ocean. Now, one of the problems here is that the ship plummeted way too quickly. According to research, this ship could have stayed afloat a bit longer and saved more lives, but the quality of the materials and many other design problems made this chaos inevitable. Now, if it wasn't for this epic catastrophe, we wouldn't have the safety measures we have today. Our next entry is the R-101 Airship. Airships were once the most popular form of aviation, way before airplanes innovated their technology. But things like the Hindenburg disaster make us glad that we don't have to use airships anymore. You know, unless we want to. In 1937, a passenger airship caught fire and was destroyed while it was flying from Germany into New Jersey. That right there is a pretty long way for that kind of transportation. This incident caused 36 deaths. Today, you don't hear of people boarding airships to travel around the world, and if anything, they just use them to do advertising. Our next entry is the Skylab. The first space station launched by the US made history, but not everything about it was good news. Its designers didn't take into account the aerodynamics of the meteoroid shield and solar panels. For that reason, Skylab suffered big time during launching. The crew spent a lot of their time doing repairs and complaining about the excessive heat while on board. Overall, there were three different astronaut crews in the station between 1973 and 74. In the end, Skylab's orbit decayed and disintegrated in the late 70s, a few years before the space shuttle was ready, which was the spacecraft that was supposed to boost the station. Our next entry is the Boston Molasses Disaster. The Purity Distilling Company was a chemical firm in Boston that specialized in the making of ethanol, a compound that you find in many substances, including drinking alcohol. And molasses plays a huge role in the making of ethanol. That's why they had tanks of this substance in this company. One of the largest tanks, which was about 12,000 tons and had around 2.3 gallons of molasses, exploded in 1919. This happened because the tank reached high temperatures. When it couldn't contain it anymore, the tank exploded and created a flood that made the ground shake. There were around 150 people who got injured, 21 more lost their lives. And on top of that, many people got stuck in the molasses, waiting for someone to come rescue them. Our next entry is the Firestone 500 Radio. Radial tires became a thing in the late 60s. The ones who put it in the market were Goodrich and Michelin. But the people at Firestone didn't want to be left behind, so they had to come up with their own version of the radial tires. Unfortunately, what they made was the Firestone 500 Radial, a tire that allowed water to seep into the tread. This eventually caused rusting and separation of the tread. Dozens of deaths were reported, but Firestone blamed it on the customers. However, they finally had to give up and realize that their radial tire wasn't that good, and they had to recall millions of tires and pay a fine of $500,000, which at the time was the largest fine imposed on a US company. And mind you, $500,000 was definitely worth way more than what it is today. Our next entry is McDonnell Douglas DC-10. McDonnell Douglas was the largest competitor to Boeing and their DC-10 airliner was supposed to compete against the Boeing 747. One of the interesting things about these airplanes was that their doors opened outwards, which made them vulnerable to being forced open at high altitudes. And of course, that's exactly what happened to Turkish Airlines Flight 981 on March 3rd of 1974. The doors were not properly closed, and that led to a deadly flight that was blamed on human factors, interface design, and of course, engineering. It ended up becoming the deadliest aircraft accident without any survivors, and it could have been prevented if it wasn't for an incorrectly secured cargo door. Our next entry is the Northeastern US Power Grid. We've all experienced a power outage every now and then, am I right? But when millions of people in two different countries are left without power for up to 13 hours, you know that something big is happening. On the evening of August 14, 2003, parts of the northeastern and midwestern regions of the US and the province of Ontario in Canada were left without electricity. Apparently, this massive power outage was caused by a software bug in the system of the company that distributes energy to this part of the world. More than 30 million homes were affected by this event, and many people got stuck in subways and elevators before getting help. Now it's time for the day's best pick. The picture I chose for today looks like something out of a dystopian film, but where and when did this happen? Let's have a look with the Sampung Department Store. The Sampung Department Store first opened for the public in 1990 in Seoul, South Korea. During its five years of existence, it welcomed around 40,000 people each day. 
But from the very beginning, this building had a lot of problems. First of all, it had very small floor columns, which couldn't stand the weight of the building. And the 15-ton air conditioning units were installed on the top floor. That only added to the weight of the load, actually. Naturally, the building began to crack. Many inspectors came to check it out and said that the building could collapse at any moment. But instead of making significant changes, the developers just moved furniture around and kept welcoming customers. They were afraid of losing money. However, the massive building finally collapsed on June 29, 1995, causing more than 500 deaths and trapping at least 1,500 people. The developers ended up in jail and they lost millions of Korean won. If only they had evacuated people and do renovations in time, their losses wouldn't have been this bad. Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. Our final entry is the St. Francis Dam. We finish off our list with a very epic mistake. It is the story of William Mulholland, a guy who was a self-taught engineer. Self-taught normally doesn't inspire confidence, but don't underestimate him for being so. This guy played a big role in turning Los Angeles into the biggest city in California, but he also made a little... okay, not so little mistake. He built a dam over a faulty foundation without taking into consideration the geography of the area. Eventually, this dam ruptured. The incident killed 450 people and ruined entire villages along Mahalan's career as an engineer. The crazy thing is, there weren't any eyewitnesses who survived to tell their story. Today, engineers around the world have learned from these mistakes, so nothing like this should happen again. Hopefully. Which of these was the scariest mistake for you? Let us know in the comment section down below. With all that said and done, I'll see you all next time, everybody. Later!